One more. Last but not least. It's my honor to welcome the final inductee to the Silver Circle 2022. Longtime Rhode Island anchor, Pamela Watts. Pamela's television career spans nearly 40 years all in the prominence market. Here to introduce Pamela is the senior producer of Rhode Island PBS Weekly, Justin Kenny, along with special guest, Scott James. Good evening, as mentioned, my name is Justin Kenny. I'm the senior producer for Rhode Island PBS Weekly. I'm a last minute replacement for our executive producer, Barbara Dury, who is not feeling so well tonight. Um, I found out today at around 2.45. The good news for you is I only had time to write three sentences. <laughs> as somebody who grew up in Rhode Island, Pamela Watts was always the face that we saw every evening on our television sets. Back in January, I had the opportunity to join our broadcast, and I have to say it's truly an honor to work with her every day, and it's a great honor for me tonight to celebrate her career. Pamela's generous spirit, along with her talent, crisp writing, journalistic integrity, and wonderful storytelling have brought much to our broadcast. While we've known Pamela a relatively short time, Scott James, with me, has worked from her, with her from the very beginning of her career. We'd like to thank you for everything that you've done and helping move us along with uh, Pamela's application and, and, and producing the video as well. Uh, before, before turning this over to Scott, however, I want to say, Pamela, thank you for joining our broadcast. It has been a wonderful ride. It's been short, but we're gonna go much longer. Um, from the entire te team, Barbara, Michelle, Isabella, Ross, and Mike, congratulations on this incredible achievement. We're all looking forward to all the great stories to come, and we love you. Uh, I'm Scott James, and uh, oh, Pamela, uh, what can I say? It is a great honor to be here with you tonight. As Justin mentioned, I was there for the very beginning of Pamela's career. In fact, I was present for her very first day in broadcast TV news, and I remember it well. <laughs> One of the jokes we like to say about covering the news in Rhode Island is that on a slow day, you can do a corruption story. That's because the state, you know, some of you know, has a little problem with crime. Well, Pamela had just walked into the newsroom and big news hits, New England, New England mob boss Raymond Patriarca is dead. The news director points to Pamela and tells her to put together a comprehensive package on Patriarca's life of crime, and she has two hours to do it. I'm not sure Pamela had even met with HR or found the restroom yet. She certainly had not seen the station's disorganized archives, some on film and some on three-quarter tape. I was barely past being an intern that day and remember thinking about the news director, is he high? <laughs> Turns out, yes. <laughs> it was the 1980s, and you know, I will say that, you know, eventually that news director found God and sobriety, so it all worked out really well. But that, at that moment, it was nuts in that newsroom. Well, Pamela survived the patriarch of Obit, and we bonded. Pamela is more than just an accomplished journalist. She is, also has this innate joy that fills up a room and those around her. In a short time, I went from barely being an intern to become the news director at Channel 6. And I was blessed to have Pamela as a colleague all those years. We've been friends every day since. How many people could you say that, right? Now, don't take my word for how amazing she is. Let's look at a video retrospective of Pamela's career as narrated by Silver Circle recipient, Ken Bell. Good evening. Welcome to Rhode Island PBS Weekly. I'm Pamela Watts. Pamela Watts a veteran journalist and fixture on Southern New England television. She's a beloved hometown favorite as Rhode Island has clan cakes and stuffed cohorts. Pamela grew up in Rhode Island, went to college there, and has always called it home. Even early on, she had the instinct to spot a newsmaker. <laughs> Rhode Islanders first heard Pamela on the University of Rhode Island's radio station. Then, she was hired by local radio, starting professionally at age 19. In 1983, 
She made her debut in television news at the Providence Journal's groundbreaking local cable news, covering the Bedford, Fall River, and Dartmouth. This is WLNE News. Hey, good evening, everyone. I'm Pamela Watts, and here's what's happening on this Sunday night. By the next year, she was an anchor and reporter at WLNE Channel 6 in Providence. An American warship is hit in the Persian Gulf. Good evening, I'm Pamela Watt. It was the beginning of a 15-year run at the station. Pamela launched Channel 6's morning newscast. She also helped create the station's 6 Live at 5 broadcast. And she became known for her one-on-one -on -one interviews with the day's newsmakers. Her skills soon earned her the anchor chair of the station's main newscast at 6 and 11 p.m. And she was awarded the Emmy for the best anchor in New England, twice. It was more than her journalism that brought her the praise of her colleagues. In a business known for sharp elbows, yes, Pam really was that nice. But all those years at Channel 6 were just the beginning. From Eyewitness News, this is High Speed News on WPRI.com. The next chapter brought her to WPRI-TV Channel 12 in Providence, where she anchored the morning and noon newscasts and more one-on-one -on -one interviews. It's been noted that political pundits and commentators and comics have been a lot tougher on you than they've been on your <laughs> opponents. That has got to sting on a personal level. How do you deal with that? Pamela's warmth came through the camera and, of course, her flawless professionalism. Hello, I'm Pamela Watts. And I'm Mark Zinni. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Pamela Watts. <laughs> I can't <do> <laughs> <laughs> Pamela went on to launch Rhode Island's first national public radio station, the last state in the country to get its own affiliate. And throughout her career, she's used her platform on behalf of local charities, helping to raise millions for worthy causes. Today, Pamela is co-anchor and correspondent for Rhode Island PBS Weekly on WSBE TV in Providence, a magazine show with long-form storytelling. Um, threatened me. And I didn't Did you get death threats? Yeah, there were death threats. Things of like people saying he needs to be brought to justice. How old were you when you first realized I'm not a girl? Probably around four years old. With Rhode Island PBS, Pamela's career has come full circle. She began in Rhode Island and continues in Rhode Island. And now she's welcome to the Emmy's Silver Circle. It's recognition of Pamela's natural news instincts, charm, and goodness under pressure. And always, always professionalism. Hello, I'm Pamela Watts. <laughs> I don't think I can do it. I'll do it a lot. <laughs> Because it would harm a person's reputation, 
and uh, their well-being. So, because you can get sued for this too, and it's, there's a name for it. So I'm not sitting here thinking probably about the next frat party. And uh, <laughs> next day comes the quiz, and he asked, "What is it when you know you report something as uh, that's false as a fact? You can be sued for." And I swear to you, this was the response I put down on the quiz. You can be sued for defecation of character. <laughs> That's how I started. <laughs> he gave you an A. He was going to read it to the class, but he couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> and uh, then we had a little discussion about uh, accuracy in journalism. <laughs> but, um, you know, I believe that the greatest honor anyone can receive is the uh, recognition from their peers. That's what the Emmys are about, and that is what the Silver Circle and Golden Circle is about tonight, the Gold Circle. And, um, you know, I want to say a, a special thanks to the Emmy Board of Governors and to the Board of Selection for this tremendous honor. But uh, as everybody said tonight, we're being awarded for doing what we're passionate about, being passionate storytellers. And, um, you know, despite all of the, the frustration and the challenges of this business and the heartbreak that we've probably all been through, um, you get, as people mentioned prior to this, you get a front seat to history. I get to learn something every day, and I have the privilege of a career with purpose that this is a public service and that there are still people who are hungry for the truth. So what a, a privilege it is to do this job. Um, I am very grateful to Robana PBS for giving me an opportunity to continue being a storyteller, and uh, to my boss, Barbara, who conspired behind my back. I didn't know they were doing this to nominate me for this true honor. Um, and also um, to Justin, and she, I'm sorry she couldn't be here tonight, she is okay. But uh, she has really brought such, um, not only an opportunity to me, but also the opportunity to get her guidance because she's a veteran of 60 Minutes. And so she can always tell me how Don Hewitt would do it. <laughs> so <laughs> um, it, it's just a, a great learning experience. Justin Kenny, thank you for stepping in, our senior producer. Uh, what a privilege to work with him. And first, Scott James, who wrote that story about me. Um, he, I, I don't know what to say. He is the best friend anyone could have in this lifetime. I wish you all a a friend like him. He has been by my side through all the ups and downs in this business, and he has, um, I, I don't make a move without him. I, it's, um, he's called me to be a better person, both personally and professionally, but mostly personally. And he's a blessing in my life, and I'm so grateful. I love you. To my family and friends, my little band who are here to support me through all the ups and downs, I am so grateful to you. Thank you for being here tonight. And of course, um, what, a, what a wonderful career that I've enjoyed. But my greatest achievement, I have to say, are my children who are here, uh, Andrew and Paige. Um, they are um, just, you know, they've been everything in my life. They have shared me with the public. They have put up with going to uh, public events and uh, fundraisers, and they would stood up when they were in the carriages, and people would come up to me and, and start you know, hugging me and kissing me in stores. And <laughs> They go like, what's going on? Um, <laughs> but um, I'm so proud of them. I'm so glad that they have a lot. Uh, they have shared me, and I promise not to embarrass them tonight. But and I know everybody's tired. I have to go home. But just one little quick story. So um, when they were very little, and I was on television, they would go up to the camera, to, to the television screen, and they would kiss it, and then they would say, "Now can we turn on Barney?" <laughs> <laughs> So it's so fun I should be back at PBS. To all of the honorees tonight, congratulations. Wow, it's just I'm privileged to be in, in your company. And um, to all of you, I wish you all the best of luck and success, and thank you.